Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today I've got a few tips and tricks on using the router, both handheld and the router table. So uh, stick around and let's get started. In a moment I'm going to use this router bit and cut a dado and I'm going to show you how you can cut it absolutely perfect every time. Now what I need to do, because I'm cutting a dado, I need to have a certain depth and I like to use 3 8 that's a pretty common uh, depth for me. And with most routers they have something called a turret and you can see this thing that turns down here and it's got different steps and this height adjustment or, or depth adjustment and what that allows you to do is after you bottom out the bit and I'm going to show you that in a second you can actually set the depth very accurately. Now you can do it a couple ways if you've got a couple of blocks around that are the right depth you can do it that way so you can take that and drop that down to there and reset that and that's right there. So that if I take that now and release that, when I take these blocks away and push down, it will go to that depth. But there's another way of doing it too that's even easier. And the way you do that is you, you release the router so the bit touches the, the base, in this case my workbench, and if I want to go for example to 3 8 normally I would use one of my measuring bars here and what I can do now is just set that, and it doesn't matter which turn because a few of them will work, I'll just use the one that's there and now when I drop that down to there, you can see that's bottoming out there, and when I tighten that now when I release that and go over to the wood that I want to cut, that will cut 3 8 But look, here's another thing that's really handy. If you don't have these measuring bars, you can use drill bits. They're super accurate and they do exactly the same thing. So I'll release that. So I'm going to take it and bottom it out and we'll go back to the same... Oh, there it is. There it's on the bottom. Now I, what I do is put a drill bit in there and take that and lock that and when I release that now when I go to my wood that's going to give me a perfect 3 8 because that's a 3 8 drill bit. Okay I've taken a moment to set up my demonstration here and what I want to do is I want to cut a dado in this scrap piece of plywood that I have here and I have a temporary fence set up along here and you can see that I've got it clamped on each end and basically what I want to do I want to cut a dado that is the thickness of this board and you know what I don't even it's around three quarters of an inch it might be thick or thinner doesn't even matter I don't even need to measure it the only thing that I need is a strip of wood that is the same distance and this is a, a 5 8 drill bit or sorry a router bit and as long as that is a 5 8 piece of wood I use this for my initial measuring so what I'm going to do I'm going to put this piece of wood in and run a dado using this piece of wood then I'll take it out and replace it with this to get an exact fit so let me show you how that works So there's my first pass and I'm taking out my measuring stick and now I'm putting in the piece of wood that I'm going to actually going to be using to fit in that strip and it's going to be my new measuring bar. So I'm going to go ahead now and do the second pass. And that should be a perfect fit. Look at that, an exact, snug, perfect fit. This next little tip, you can use it for two things. You can use it for veneering, and I used to do a lot of veneering at one time. And when you're veneering, you need to, very often you've got sheets of veneer and you need to get them glued or fastened together and you typically use tape for that. Um, you can see that they kind of fit together but they're not very tight at all. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to make those perfectly sharp clean edges where they will fit together tightly. 
So what I want to do now, I have, you'll notice on top here, I've got a factory edge from a piece of MDF and it's going to be my guide because I'll get a perfect edge with that. But what I'm going to do, I want to sandwich these two together as best I can between the lower, you can see I've got a lower piece of wood underneath here and it's nice and flat and straight. It's another piece of MDF and I'm going to put the top one and I'm going to carefully position it on top and then I'm going to clamp it. So there's those two edges. Now watch when I put them together. Look at how look at they just they just absolutely disappear. You can't if I move my finger, you can't even see where the line is. And that's exactly what you want to do when you're veneering. You want a nice piece of wood that you can't even tell where the joints are. Now I'm going to use the same principle. If you can look closely, you'll see that that black edge is from that spalted wood that I just had a moment ago. And what I'm going to do, all I really want to do with this one is get a straight edge on here. So, and I don't need to sandwich it because the board here is quite firm. So I'm just going to go ahead now and make that cut. Basically the same principle. And there you can see we got a nice straight cut. I actually need to do another one because I didn't go quite deep enough. Uh, but you can see that that's a nice straight cut along there. Now I could take that, well I need to make another cut there, but I could take that now to my table saw and cut the other side of that off. And then now then I'd have a nice straight board. Now remember you can use either a top bearing or a bottom bearing bit. All you need to remember is that the bearing needs to ride against the um, factory surface. The next thing I want to show you is how you can use your router as a planer or your router table. Now the first thing I want to do is remove my fence and the reason I want to move my, remove my fence is I have a split fence and they're sometimes hard to align and when you're running the kind of wood through that I'm going to be doing, I don't want my wood to pinch anywhere. So what I'm doing, I'm putting on a fixed fence uh, and I've run this through my jointer so that it's absolutely straight and flat because we're going to be pushing wood through the um, router like this. And I don't want that to get caught, stuck somewhere um, because it's pinched between the blade and the fence, just like you would on the table saw. So I'm going to take a moment and um, clamp this down. And when I come back, I'll show you how to do this. Okay, so I have everything all set up here. There's my router bit in here. And I've set it up for the amount of wood that I want to take off. Now here's where this gets very critical. When you're using the router table with your fence, typically the fence is covering at least half of the router bit. And when that's the case, we're always feeding into the bit. We're feeding from right to left. So there's right and we're feeding to left this way. And the reason we're doing that is because the router bit travels in this direction and we always want to feed into the blade. Same as you do on a table saw. You always want to feed into the blade. But in this case, we're not using the front of the blade. We're actually using the back of the blade. So look at, see where the blade, see where the bite is now, the blade, the the cutting area is going this way. See that? That blade is now going to be cutting this way into the wood. So now we have a, a totally different, a totally different place where we want to push the wood from because the blade is going to be pushing in this way. If we were to take the wood and try and push it this way, what's going to happen? That router bit is going to grab that wood and it's going to wing it this way. The same, exactly the same as if you try and feed wood in your table saw, if you try and feed it in the back way, you know, if you were to feed wood in the back way into your table saw, it grabs the wood and, and 
pulls it right out of your hand and, and whips it through the saw. So I've got this all set up. Let's go ahead and make this cut. Okay, so there's nothing unsafe about doing this. It's going to be a little bit dusty, but I'm using the same push stick that I use on my table saw because I have a live bit here. So let's go ahead and make that cut. And there we have a perfect straight flat cut. So this might be something you used if you wanted to make a, a multitude of exactly parallel pieces and maybe you don't have a planer. Uh, this is a way of doing it. Um, you just need to make sure that you remember that you've got a live bit there, the same as you would on a table saw or any other um, woodworking machine where you've got a bit working. Um, so you just, you need to be careful, the same as any other tool. Uh, if you want, you could put, uh, you know, you could put a guard on here you could uh, manufacture a guard over top of that uh, which would be nice because it would help keep some of the dust down as well that concludes my video for today just a few tips and ideas to help you solve some problems and maybe get some more use out of your router and your router table i'm colin Kanat for woodwork web thanks for watching